What is something rich people buy that poor people know nothing about? Kidnapping insurance. I worked for a company that sold kidnap insurance. I though the most interesting part is a majority of the time the person who was insured had no idea about it. For the people that do know and are going to a place with a high chance of being kidnapped they are given some training on what to do. I got to spend one day trying to avoid getting kidnapped. We drove around in Manhattan in armored S-Class while random cars were the kidnappers. The instructor showed us what to look for and what to do in certain situations. Rich Russian businessmen rent taxis that are luxurious on the inside, but look like ambulances on the outside to avoid traffic. My sister used to work at a very expensive hotel in London. She told me that new clients would check in, and then once they left the room the staff would go in and inventory everything they brought with them, and where they put it, and how with the help of staff they set the room up. They do this so the next time the client schedules a room, the staff can run out and buy everything on the list so the client doesn't have to have any luggage and everything is set up how they like it. They have thousands of clients and she showed me pictures of room layouts and lists of clothing, watches, and other things that are always set up the same for the same client. Crazy stuff. You used to be able to rent a disabled person at Disneyland to get past the lines. Disney parks have now changed their policies because of this. It used to be that disabled people and their families would go to the front of the line, now the disabled people are offered an air-controlled area to wait in line, but not guaranteed a shorter wait. I used to be a Disney employee and my aunt brought my two cousins to visit me while I was there. One of my cousins has a rare neurological disorder that, among other things, causes her to have seizures when she's in stressful environments, like Disney can be. The places they let us wait were nice and it worked out great, but there were many more profoundly disabled people waiting with us that could have really benefited from shorter waits. It's a shame that rich people have ruined that for people who actually need it. The Strand, a bookstore in New York, sells books by the foot. Mostly they're encyclopedias, 14th editions, things that aren't of much value. But they have really pretty spines for making your library look pretty. Just bought a new house with a big, empty library? Just measure the width of the shelves, choose cloth of leather, and a few days later you'll put Jay Gatsby to shame. There's insurance on fine art. And I don't mean, sorry you lost it in the hurricane, here's your paycheck insurance. I mean, the area is flooded and riots are breaking out. We're going to send a SWAT-like team to helicopter in and fly your assets out of the area and into a safer place kind of insurance. My dad worked for that company. Chubb Insurance. In addition to fine art coverage, they offered specific rich people services like international business coverage code for kidnapping insurance, coverage for collectible cars, watercraft and employment practices liability for when the residential staff on your estate accuses you of sexual harassment. This is embarrassing, but until last year, I am now 24, it did not occur to me that people could file their own taxes and not use an accountant. Or rather, John, the family accountant. Edit, forgot to tell you about John. Shit is easy if you're poor. Income, zero dollars. State withholdings, zero dollars. Taxes, zero dollars. I'm not rich but etiquette school. I don't remember how the conversation started, but a friend of mine from college starting talking to me about etiquette school. I must have given her a questionable look because she immediately paused, looked embarrassed and said something along the lines of not everyone goes to etiquette school, do they? Etiquette school, or cotillion and debutante, is not even close to being reserved exclusively to the rich. Especially in the South. Obscure brands of regular items. I have a few well-off friends and trust fund babies, and all of them need obscure brands of regular items. They want potato chips it can't be Lay's it has to be a imported thin-cut potato from France that was harvested by the bay on a cool afternoon by a happy French man. I remember some drama on a message board I frequented long ago, wherein a girl was complaining that there was no possible way she could live on the $2,000 a month her parents were giving her for food. 
I have to assume something like this was going on with her. I know she would only shop at a grocery store called AJ's Fine Foods. I believe they're local to Phoenix. Growing up in the 80s and 90s as a kid, all I remember is that if someone ever owned a refrigerator that had an electric ice maker and served water, I would assume they were rich. The same was said about families with kids that owned power wheels or had a cell phone in their car. Shit. How times have changed. A lot of people have multiple cars but rich people have cars specifically for the weekend. During the week you drive your average S-Class Lexus 7 Series that you don't mind subjecting to cruel traffic, but from Thursday to Sunday you drive your weekend car. These fall on three spectrums antiques, sports cars, or luxury cars. I don't know much about the antiques, but I love going for drives in the area on Fridays just to look at the Rolls Royce Phantoms and Lumbos. Lumbos Ferraris are usually driven by younger rich people, Arabs and athletes, and are seen at night usually racing. The luxury cars are the old people. Maseratis are not weekend cars, they're work cars. And every Saturday morning there's a car show in our town. Also banks. If you're rich, you usually are a preferred customer at multiple big-name banks. They know you by name and know your family and you can give upper-level management personal calls for help. I live in NYC and work as a courier. I regularly deliver things like $50 cookies, four of them, across town for a $15 delivery charge. $65 for four cookies. Then I must go through the service entrance under the building as I am not allowed in the regular halls. Upon arriving I hand the cookies to the servant who answers the door that is in an elevator that opens onto the kitchen usually. I have delivered a $35 bagel. The new thing is cold-pressed juices. Daily, I will drop an $80 order for 4 juices plus delivery cost. So pushing a $100 for some juice. The apartments overlooking Central Park, it's crazy. I saw a 12-year-old kid in a private school uniform wearing a brand new Apple Watch and eating with friends at a cafe that had to be $30 a head for a coffee and a snack. Then left and walked into a brownstone, 5 to 10 million dollars, in Manhattan? That kid will go to a schools that I will never see, make friends and connections that are impossible otherwise. The 1% live a different life. Different rules, different opportunities. I think it's great for them my only concern is the resources that are required to maintain that life are staggering. The carbon footprint, the man hours of people serving them, mind-boggling.